Hi everybody, uh, Mr. Bullock here. Uh, this, uh, this is the first uh, lesson I teach in calculus, uh, finding limits graphically and numerically. Uh, this is part one, so I teach at a block school now. I'd probably teach both parts on one day, but I used to teach at a traditional school. Also, I used to teach uh, that was a Casio calculator. Now I teach at a, a, a TI calculator school, so uh, I'll probably have instructions on both. Okay, so use your graphing calculator to graph uh, y equals x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. So uh, I, in my TI-83 uh, calculator, I go into y equals, you guys, um, and, uh, and I plug that in. I do parentheses, you guys. I, I plug it in as parentheses x cubed uh, minus 1, close parentheses, divided by parentheses x minus 1, parentheses. Okay, and then when you plug that in and, and play around with your calculator, and if you don't know how to, just, just Google it, you guys, and uh, I do that a lot. You get a graph that kind of looks like that. It'll tell you how to graph on there. Okay, so um, if you, I'm going to ask you this, and I'd ask this in my class. Uh, what's, the, what's this graph missing right here? This graph is missing uh, the whole because x can't equal 1. So there's a hole that it's missing at x equals 1. Here's x equals 1. There's a hole right, right around here where it doesn't equal. Everything else is going to be the same. So, so um, uh, there's a hole there because x can't equal 1 because it would give you 0 in the denominator. And you can't have 0 in the denominator. So it's missing that. So although x can't equal 1, you can move close to 1 from both sides. I can move to close to 1, x equaling 1 coming from this side, x equals 1, x equals 1, x equals 1, or coming from this side, x equals 1. And this graph, when I come from the left, this graph is coming close to right about there, and when I come from the right, it's coming down when I come down close to this. So I can move uh, uh, close to x equals 1 right here, and on both sides, this graph gets close to 3. Okay, y equals 3 right there. Okay, can you see that? All right, so to show it numerically, uh, just make a table of values and use your calculator uh, feature, your calculate feature on your graphing calculator. Okay, so I'm just going to plug all these in, you guys, into my graphing calculator. I already have this plugged into my calculator right here. And then I just use my, it says calc, C-A-L-C, -C, and just plug in calc, you guys, and then plug in 0.75 and 0.9 and 0.99. Can you see I'm getting closer to x equal 1 on the left-hand side over here? And I'm getting closer to x equal 1 on the right-hand side right here? Okay, so when I plugged all those in, I get these values right here. And look, uh, at 0.75, it's at uh, 2.31. So here, right about here, at 0.75 right here, if I went up, this would be about about 2.31-ish if I, if I did it right right there. Okay, and so notice I get closer to x equals 1 right here. This is getting closer to y equals 3, or f of x equals 3. This is going down, but getting closer to uh, f of x equals 3. Okay, so, uh, so we use the limit notation um, as this. The limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, in this case, would equal 3. And this is read as the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 equals 3. That's how that's read right there. Okay, and get used to that. You're going to be doing that for the rest of your calculus uh, career right there, writing that kind of notation. So, definition, if f of x becomes close to a single number, L, I don't know why they chose L, but they did, as x approaches C from either side, then um, the limit of f of x as x approaches C equals L. That's what this says. The limit of f of x as x approaches C equals L. Okay, so uh, find each limit. Okay, so we can find each limit by, by graphing or plugging them into my calculator. Here, um, uh, what I did is I, I used, uh, I did plug it into my calculator right here just to get a look right there. Here's x equals zero. It's this y-axis right here. So it looks like, um, uh, I forgot what it's getting close to right there, but my graph kind of curves up like that just a little bit. So when you plug it in, but I had to plug it into my y equals so I can hit my calculate here and make this table of values. And then this will give me a, a general idea. As long as it's approaching the same thing, Look, this is 1.995. This is even closer to 2 over here. This is this is going down to 2 on this side right here. As I approach 0 from the left and from the right, uh, f of x is approaching 2 right there. Okay? So uh, it can't equal 0, you guys, because when I plug in 0 right here, 0 plus 1 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. 
1 minus 1 is 0. So x can't equal 0 because it gets me 0 in the denominator right there. So uh, anyway, so uh, three dots uh, in math, you guys, three dots means therefore. Therefore, the limit of, of as x approaches 0 equals 2 because it's approaching 2 on both sides. Okay, pretty groovy, huh? All right, so here's a, a piecewise function, you guys. So uh, f of x equals, this. remember, f of x equals y. y equals 1. So y equals 1 is just a horizontal line at 1 when x doesn't equal 2, and y equals 0 when x does equal 2. So find the limit as x approaches 2. Okay, well, here's the graph right there. Okay, so here's a, it, it equals 1 everywhere except that x equals 2, and then it equals 0. Yeah, I should have put, made a blue dot right there, but I didn't. But it, sh it equals uh, 0 when x equals 2 right there. So what's the limit as x approaches 2? Well, it's got to be the same as I go from one side to the other side. Well, can you see it's at 1 when I, I can get infinitely close to x equals 2, and I get 1 when I go on this side from the right-hand side. I can get infinitely close again to x equals 2, and y is always 1. So what's the limit? It equals 1. Okay, so as long as it's approaching it from both sides, you guys, the same number, then that's what it equals. So the limit on this one equals 1. This is just a deception right there. Okay, did it get you? <laughs> All right, so this one here, absolute values, you guys, is um, uh, it, it, when you put this in your calculator, you guys, your graph kind of looks like this. Okay, um, and then your TI calculators, you find your absolute values under your math function and your number function. You scroll over to your numbers. In the Casio, the absolute value is in the graph and options and then number function right there. Okay, uh, But anyways, your graph right there. So let's approach 0 from the left. When I approach 0 from the left, y equals negative 1. Okay? When I approach 0 from the y, right, y equals positive 1. Since they don't match up, then we say this limit does not exist. Whoops does not exist. Okay? DNE means does not exist. Okay? Because it's not the same number from both sides. All right, when I graph this dude right here, okay, gives me a graph that kind of looks like uh, this right here. Okay? So when I approach uh, x from the left, y is going to infinity. When I approach uh, x from the uh, x equals 0, sorry, x equals 0 from the right, y is going to infinity. So it's going to infinity on both sides. But infinity is not a real number, so you just say it doesn't exist, okay? I know you guys want to write infinity, but uh, in these cases, your limit doesn't exist. We want a, a constant number L. We don't want an infinity number. Infinity is an undefined number, so uh, it, it won't exist on that one. Okay, how about this one? Okay, the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 1 over x. All right, before you plug it into your calculator, make sure your calculator is in radians mode, not degrees mode, because you won't get a graph if you have it in degrees mode. Okay, my graph kind of looks like that. Okay, and it, uh, when I graphed it in radians mode, and it looks like it's approaching zero right there, you guys, but if you zoom in several times, you guys, and I tried to zoom in on mine, and but it's, it oscillates like crazy. I mean, it's like a big blob right there, but it oscillates, oscillates, oscillates right there. So if you make a, a table um, uh, right here, remember it's 1 over x, so 1 over this one is going to be pi over 2, and the sine of pi over 2 equals 1. 1 over this one is going to be uh, 3 pi over 2. It's like flipping these. You know, This is the reciprocal of x, so if I reciprocate these, then the sine of this is going to be uh, the sine of this is 1. The sine of uh, uh, 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Sine of 5 pi over 2 is positive 1. It's oscillating between 1 and negative 1, 1 and negative 1, 1 and negative 1 as I approach 0. Okay, from both sides, it's going to go 1 and negative 1. So it doesn't exist on that one, you guys. It does not exist. Okay, now if you're in my calculus class, I would assign that as your homework right there. And we we're using the Larson's uh, uh, calculus book at my school. Okay, take care.